Awesome. We're here to talk to you about uh, Defect Dojo today. Myself and Aaron, we've both been around this project for a long time. This started eight, whoa, maybe nine years ago. Um, as a project inside of Rackspace uh, that, that was open sourced and then um, added to the stable of OWASP projects. So who am I? I'm, I'm Matt Tassaro. I'm a, a reformed, so to speak. <laughs> programmer and AppSec engineer. I've, I've been around OWASP for over 13 years. I'm a leader of the AppSec pipeline project. I'm one of the maintainers for Defect Dojo. I also did the WTE project. Been on the board, been around for a long, long time. I'm also very big in free and Libra and open source software as well as Linux. I am a Golang fanboy. That's what I like to code in these days. And that is a picture of me actually doing my double kick board break for my second degree black belt. So I can actually get my nun or my rather substantial mass off the ground every once in a while. Awesome. So I'm nowhere near as cool as Matt, um, <laughs> only slightly. <laughs> uh, also, I started out as a programmer as well. Uh, I don't know if I'm reformed yet. Uh, I'm still working on it. Matt's still trying hard. Uh, I'm doing a lot of cloud security stuff right now as well. Um, similar OWASP chapter leader, Defect Dojo project leader. Uh, unlike Matt, I like Python still. It's one of our minor disagreements. Um, and I'm not cool like Matt. I can't chop anything. The only thing that I can do is I hang around sleeping pigs. And let me tell you, if you've tried, ever tried to get a selfie with a pig, it, it's hard. Um, my shorts, they were nibbling on it. So that's my only claim to fame is I'm a, a pig wrangler. That probably helps you with your security work, to be honest. I think so. Yeah. So uh, I, I have to keep the slide in there. I love this picture. It, 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 people love the money shot, right? The cool, hey, I'm breaking two boards. It's really awesome. But behind that board breaking was a lot of like grunty work to get things done. And quite honestly, this is a perfect example of how I feel when I log into the 72nd different stupid web console to look at the output of some kind of security tool. I'm not a fan of that, right? Or when, God help me, I have to take everybody's snowflakey version of output and try to make sense of it and combine it and find out that this DAS tools, this is actually that, that DAS tools, something else. Like I, I'm just sick of it. And so we did a little bit of a study, a very, very, very scientific study where we asked enterprise vulnerability management programs, what is your tool of choice? And I hate to say it, and this is a bit tongue in cheek, but it's Excel. I can't believe how many people manage vulnerabilities in Excel. I'm a, I'm a command line Linux person. I don't much like Excel, period. But I, that is what, not the right way to be handling your vulnerabilities. Yeah, actually, Matt, this reminds me of, remember when we, we both worked at a large education company <laughs> and when we came <laughs> there, they had them in Google Sheets. So it was a step up. Yeah, um, yeah. And then they had all these actions, but that, even visiting those sheets, remember how long it would take like ages for them to even load up. Even there, load. Was, there were so many vulnerabilities in it. Uh, it, yeah. it was cool what they did in there, but uh, yeah, totally misusing the, the, the technology. Uh, you could only push those tools so far before they start to get broken. Or like you said, take three minutes to load, right? Which is not so cool, right? So to me, using spreadsheet or even a collaborative spreadsheet like product is like putting rubber rain boots on your dog, right? Why? Because it's cute. Yeah, he's cute. <laughs> he's a cute little guy. He's a lot fatter and older now, unfortunately. Um, kind of like me. Um, OWASP Defect Dojo is an open source uh, security orchestration and vulnerability management uh, platform. Came out of Rackspace. It was created by the product security team there. It was made by product and AppSec people for AppSec people. I think that's one of the bigger differentiators. It's very focused on you just getting your job done. Um, and it can be the source of truth for all of your security activities, right? We're ingesting 100 plus tools now. That's across DAS, SAST, IAST, container tools, cloud tools, you name it, it's there. Um, and it, but the it's really fundamental or one of the great things it does for you is consolidate and dedupe all those findings, right? You have multiple tools and you can't help but kind of have to run multiple tools if you have any kind of complex environment that you're trying to secure. So how do you put all those together and wrangle them? Well, that's what Defect Doja will get you, right? You can create findings, you can reconcile status of those findings by integrating with things like Jira. It has a REST API, so it's automation friendly. And you can use that to maintain a list of product and application information, right? Like what technologies run what products? You can search for that. Now you have this sort of 
asset inventory of all your products and applications. And I think one of the things that Do Defect Dojo has done really in a, in a very good way is that there's nothing that we don't eat. I mean, we pretty much consume it all. I mean, going back to my pig analogy, we're, we're the, I guess we're the pig of AppSec. How's that? I don't know if that's <laughs> AppSec yeah, hogs. I don't know. <laughs> but, but we're able to, you know, pull in it. And I, I get kind of amazed. I mean, I don't know, you know, just to brag a little bit about Defect Dojo, but I, I don't know if, of any sort of other tool that is able to import as many different tools uh, as, as Defect Dojo. And we're going to, we'll cover it a little bit, but I think it speaks to the fact that um, you know, the, the community really does do a lot of uh, support because it's not just us that's created that. I mean, these are contributions that are coming from a lot of our members and, you know, some of them have never picked up Python. And I think that's probably part of the cool thing when we go back to where we both started, which was in, you know, application security or secure, just, just development. And then we moved over, um, but, it, but it's getting, you know, security people to, to actually write code, which I, which I think is great. I mean, that, that's awesome and, and vice versa. Um, but, but really getting a, a view of having all your security in one, you know, you've got your compliance, you've also, you know, able to integrate with CI, CD. Uh, I mean, the, really this tool, we, we created it so that you can use it. It's not just something that some other person's thought of that they think might be cool. No, I mean, it's, it's contributions that really make your application security program work uh, versus, you know, trying to shoehorn in something from a vendor, which is, I think is where we, is one of the reasons why we try to create this. Um, yes. Yeah. Uh, going on for the, the tech stack. Um, so, you know, this started originally as a uh, Django application uh, with Python 2. Um, you know, a couple, was it two and a half years ago, we made the, time goes by fast. Very but, you know, fast. <laughs> we made that semi-painful move to Python 3. So that's awesome. Django 2. Um, and we are working on a React front end, but uh, we weren't API first. So, so I know that that's one of your first loves, Matt. Um, it is. But we're, but we're getting there, you know? And so not all of the things in the API are in the UI, um, but, but as we work towards that, you know, we're gonna have a, a whole refresh of our user interface. But me being a little biased, I think it's still quite usable, um, oh. even though it, it's probably been around, the, the UI has been around for a couple of years now. Oh, it, it, it works very well. Um, so one of the things just to cover the sort of features, what do you get out of the box when you open up Defect Dojo, right? Or what can you do with it, right? It, it, it is a great way to manage your AppSec or product security or whatever you want to call it program. It has the ability to uh, store both application information and metadata uh, and even tie in things like compliance, what technologies are driving those various uh, applications. There's metrics, dashboards, reporting, kind of standard stuff. It has OWASP ASVS built in, which we just ended up talking about OWASP ASVS. There's tagging across multiple levels and across many of the different data objects. So if you do need to customize it to fit your particular company's situation, tags give you that flexibility. It has a, it allows you to have a historical knowledge of uh, any past assessments you did. So, if, you know, the, you get a drive-by boss question. When was the last time we looked at App X? Well, a couple of clicks and you can tell them. Uh, there's a calendar of activities you can export to Google Sheets. Um, there's a REST API that's swaggerified. We have SSO with Okta, Google, um, Azure AD, SAML, all of the sort of ways to do SSO. There's notifications to Jira, to Slack, to MS Teams. Um, and you can ingest, like I said, tools from, or, or output from many, many tools. So how so many I different, mean, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was just, just well, I don't know why I jumped into you. Um, but yeah, yeah. Th this is, this slide here though, is just great. Like, I, I can't tell you, like, how many different tools do you use? I, I wish we had put up polls, because I'd like to hear from the audience how many different security tools they use. I know we can't see you guys, but. I know it's got to be quite a bit. <laughs> it's a ton. And, and you just can't, if you have even a mildly complex environment, you have to have almost all of these. And, and you know, vendors are creatively finding new ways to write new tools in open, the open source world as well as we speak, right? So this is not even a comprehensive list of tools anymore. And I think one of the things that we've tried to do is, is resist writing tool-ish sort of things in Defect Dojo. You know, we, we, you know, first we have thought about that, you know, wouldn't it be nice if it just did it all, but then, but then you, you kind of, we're trying to separate those different concerns and tools do what they do best and then 
trying to make Dojo be that presentation, bringing everything together view. Yeah, it's a, it's a kind of a Unix way, like one thing to do one thing very well. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so how many can we import? Over 100 um, and growing, right? And this is huge. And, and, and as Aaron said earlier, this is a ton of these are community committed uh, parsers, which is super fantastic. And we greatly appreciate all those community contributions. We would not have 100 plus if it was just a handful of core maintainers doing these because I don't even own half the tools that we import or use them, not on a daily basis. And yeah, the other and like nice I said, thing- the, the format is super simple to do here. It, you know, um, it, it's the probably, it, it may not be the most elegant way to do it, uh, <laughs> but it gets the job done. So, you know. Well, and, and for particularly for initial code contributions, you don't have to write hundreds of lines of Python. Right. It's what, 2040? I don't think it's even, you could probably knock out one in 40 lines. It's pretty, yeah. it's pretty and, straightforward. And a few months ago, I even did a template generator. So if you hop over to one of the repos there, there's a template generator where you just plug in, hey, this is the name of it, and it'll spit out a Python template for you. You swap out the fields, put in your test case, your, your, your test file, and uh, you know, now you've got your, your importer. And probably the, the other hidden message behind this 100 plus tools is the fact that if you get mistreated by your pick your like DAST vendor, and you don't like them anymore, their licensing change, there's some sort of issue, you swap them out and Dojo doesn't care. Like, I think the vendors would really like you to buy their mothership and run everything through their tooling, but that also embeds you and ties you very strongly to those vendors. So if you want sort of vendor agnostic ability to ingest tools, Defect Dojo is where the money's at. So okay. uh, just to automation, I mean, I think both of us spend more time in the, in the API than we do. I mean, that's probably an understatement. <laughs> it is. <laughs> but I think we're a little old school. Maybe you're just a, a tiny more bit old school than I am. <laughs> yep. I, well, and that's, to me, that's like, it's cool that, that there's a UI and you can use things, but I want to do things at speed. And that usually means automation, right? I want to do things better, faster, quicker. And usually that's automation with the, uh, with tooling, because let's think about it. There's, there's really never enough time. Like I, I've, I have yet to be on a, uh, an AppSec team or a security team in general that had too many people, particularly versus say the amount of devs in the organization or the amount of assets of uh, infrastructure, if you're uh, just dealing with infrastructure side of security, right? So you have to make the most of the limited resources, the people that you have. And this is where automation really is your friend. Those things that don't take a lot of human brain activity, just automate them, right? And Dojo has that REST API to let you do that, where you can automate ingesting of tools, like running reports, pulling metrics out and submitting them to, you know, making nice spreadsheets and shipping them off to the, the appropriate party. All those things can happen all through the API. And so Aaron and I, several years back, came with the, up with this idea of an AppSec pipeline. And this is just a generalized uh, example of the flow of work through any kind of security program where you at the far left have an intake, right? Where you're taking in requests, either these are compliance driven, re uh, regulation driven, or maybe just you've decided to test every app every six months, whatever it is. Or maybe, you know, the, the CISO says, I want you to test this tomorrow, but you've got intake, right? And then you take this incoming work, evaluate it to say what how what and how much testing do we need to do we call that phase triage and then once you've decided what and how much testing needs to happen you want to run one or more tools against that target of your testing push all those results into one single place a vulnerability repository like defect dojo and then from there you can read out of the api or if it's built in like speaking to jira you can push directly to jira or GRC tools or metrics and reporting or whatever you need can all happen now in what we call the delivery phase where you're talking to those external stakeholders, which is why you did the security assessment to begin with. And so here's a real world example um, from a cough cough publisher, look at us in LinkedIn where Aaron and I collide, you might figure out that's where we did this. Um, but we set up a pipeline where we used bag of holding to do that intake and triage. Um, and we also had Stackstorm for orchestration, to be quite honest with you. Stackstorm was a bit of an overkill, <laughs> but it was pretty, it was cool oh, tech. And just one to mention, uh, 
people might not know, but but Bag of Holding was an internal developed tool that we had created, which held a lot of application metadata. Um, And we liked a lot of those ideas. And actually I took a lot of those ideas from Bag of Holding and quite frankly, because that was open source as well. And I just shoved it right into Dojo. So before Dojo, Dojo 1.0 didn't really have that, you know, rich view of an application that you could get all that information about like, hey, what does the Bob app do? And, right. and th- that's what we took and we folded it into Dojo. So essentially those two became one application. Yeah, and I almost, I, I like and, and dislike the slide because a lot of people think, oh, I have to have two apps. And no, you really just need one anymore. Like I, at the time, Bega Holdings seemed like a good choice. In retrospect, uh, particularly with what Dojo has in it now, I wouldn't even think about making that. Well, I that think tool. it's that, you know, that iteration and evolution process that you go through, you know, you're like, okay, let's try this. That works, but it's not great. And so we scrap and, and move on, but we still were able to take a good portion of that. And yep, push move it, it right in. into Dojo. Yep. Okay, so that, that's a real world example of, a, of an AppSec pipeline that was highly functional for us. Um, come on, why is this not going? There we go, hello, there we go. So here's another example of uh, another AppSec pipeline. This is one um, where it's much more event driven, where you have a developer checking in code up here, right? It's going into Stash. Stash is going to send a web hook to an AppSec pipeline, which is going to launch a bunch of containers that have tooling. That data will flow from the tooling into Defect Dojo, where you can do Slack alerts or summaries to the uh, developers in the appropriate channel, as well as push those issues to Jira. And then here's another example of what I would kind of call a third generation, much like the previous one, event-driven, where you have an event source that hits the AppSec pipeline, you launch a whole bunch of containers at one or more targets, and then once again, right, this gets dumped into Defect Dojo. And for me, uh, having created something like this before, it was really nice to have Dojo there because quite honestly, I got a UI for free. <laughs> you do not want to see how I write UIs. I'm really good at command line tools. I don't make UIs that look pretty. I didn't have to. I could just shove it to Dojo and be done. And so the, the first of the event-driven ones, these are some stats that came out of the running of that tool, right? We had, or that, that pipeline, 15 different repos, uh, 5,100 runs over four months and 25,000 container executions. And, and these numbers are cool, but what's really important about this is you turned security testing into an easy button or as close as you can get to an easy button. So you can just keep running these things. And that's, that's really important to get the coverage at the speed that you need in an AppSec program. And then the original one from the uh, uh, large education company, um, we started with 44 assessments in 2014. We lost some people. Um, but actually sped up to 224. And then in 2016, we actually went up to 414, losing even more people. So we did the somewhat unthinkable. We got smaller, but did more work. And I totally credit that to Defect Dojo and the AppSec pipeline automation work we did. I don't think we would have been there without it. No, you still be in spreadsheets. Yeah. <laughs> <And> Google Sheets. <laughs> with, with, a, with a five minute load time. That's great. <laughs> Uh, so real quick deployment options. Uh, the first one would be uh, Docker Compose. Um, you know, that, that's probably what we'd recommend for sure for, for development, for, you know, kicking the tires. That's one way to go with it. Um, you know, everybody's very opinionated about Docker. Uh, we, we have our ways of doing it. You have your ways of doing it. Obviously, make it your own. You can do, a, you know, it's open source. Make it work however you'd like. But this will get you, um, you know, up and running. Uh, of course, we would recommend, a, you know, dedicated database, but that's one way of doing it. Um, here's just another example, you know, real world Docker Compose with one EC2 instance, T2 large, um, my, you know, RDS, MySQL, um, and those are the settings and it's, it scales fairly well. Um, and so we're starting to get at least some numbers around, you know, how many findings can it actually hold? Um, now, dedupe does take some compute computation. So, you know, it might cause some issues because unfortunately we still have to use celery. Um, but, uh, you know, that's just what we have at the moment. But anyway, that, that's, that's exa- one real world example of Compose. Uh, Kubernetes. So a lot of folks are starting to use Kubernetes, especially um, in 
uh, Europe. That seems to be very popular uh, amongst. Would you say, Matt? That we're yeah, seeing, it, it, it seems. It, it seems. Yeah, a lot of people in Europe. Say, I don't know why that geographic. Uh, the, what we've noticed geographically makes any difference. If you know what I mean, like it's just yeah. kind of an odd thing. But it seems like much more of people in the uh, European time zones have yeah, asked anyway, about uh, yeah. Kubernetes. Yep. Anyway, so you have Helm 3 support uh, with Minikube. Um, really, you can run it anywhere you like. Uh, just need somebody that knows a little bit about Kubernetes. Yeah, I definitely say that, that there are more rough edges deploying Defect Dojo to Kubernetes than doing a Docker Compose. And it's if, if for no other reason, we've had more questions in the issues or on Slack around Compose and been able to sort of work around any kind of corner cases um, than we have with Kubernetes just because of the time it's been around. Like it, Docker uh, Compose has been running uh, Dojo for years. And Helm is what? A year and a half-ish, maybe? Maybe a little older, but yeah, around there. Yeah, so it just hasn't had as much road time. Yeah. Here, another another great example. This this is a massive installation. I think this is maybe one of our largest. One of the largest ones that, that I know, know about, of. I can talk about publicly, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, 21 gig database and, and ingesting 5,000 uh, findings per day. That, that's crazy number. And what's really crazy is this open source project does that and doesn't fall over. And then we, we used to have, uh, God help me, I wrote several thousand lines of bash um, called set up bash to do the uh, iron installs of defect dojo. That's now been migrated to go dojo, which is a single binary installer. There's over 160 configurable options because dojo's best and worst feature is it's very flexible. Um, all of those options can be overridden by environmental variables. Um, it's not interactive and it just lays out uh, Defect Dojo on iron, like a traditional VM install. And then, uh, so, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, just so some recent improvements um, of, and, and really what's coming up, there's, there's gonna be a lot of things, but uh, uh, we have one guy who's really gone back through and really tightened up our parser code. He's done an excellent job with that. Uh, The form as far as that goes, as best we can. Um, it, it, if you've spent any time in JSON, XML, and all these different formats that's coming out, you know it's not a fun job. So anybody that wants to take it on is is awesome in our book. <laughs> um, so I give uh, major kudos. Actually, it's, it's Damien that's done a lot of that. Um, unit tests, you know, we've come a long way with those. Uh, we probably you're never done there. You, we've never, I don't think you've ever say like, you can't have enough applications. You, you never have enough unit tests, <laughs> but, but we are trying to make that more, more and more robust so that we have, you know, more reliability with defect dojo, because, you know, as we see more and more organizations are actually using it and depending on it. So we really need to have that uh, dependability. Um, Reimport that was also a big deal where, you know, you can reimport findings. Um, you want to be able to keep the deltas of those. Um, and then we've just been working on improving our dedupe uh, algorithm there as well. Um, and then Jira, you know, love it or hate it, Jira is here to stay. And, and so, you know, at least now we can group findings, push them as one Jira because you don't want like 10,000 tickets for, you know, one cross the uh, cross site scripting on one page that, 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 you know, mushrooms out as we all know. Um, and then I think the one that we're probably most proud of, I mean, we're proud of a lot of different things, um, <laughs> but it's how many PRs we get. Uh, you know, we're not a stale project. I, I think you just look at all the uh, issues that are coming. It's 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 overwhelming, honestly. Um, yeah, I don't I know if you want to say anything else about that. Our Matt. PR counts in the like three K range. I think. I mean, it's it's yeah. nuts. It's really yeah. nuts in in a good way. Like I, I'm I'm thrilled that the community's rallied around Dojo as much as it has. It's been really fantastic. Uh, just so what's some things are up that uh, actually already released is uh, authorization model. Um, so we, we, we really had a very simplistic model, especially when it, not because it was in rack space, but you know, that's where it came out of, you know, when you're doing MVP product, you, you so, so that's been really expanded. Um, our API V2 is much more, I would say restful in nature. It, it, it follows more standards than our API V1 did. It's a lot easier to use. It was quite confusing to use the other one. Um, 
we've had our we've we've commi- we've done what two or three now with GSOC. Um, yeah, three. Maybe our second. Yeah. Um, and so we're, again, that was where we were trying to work on the React JS UI, um, and then we're working on you know publishing Helm charts uh, with every release. And yeah, when I know we've been talking about community. I don't know if, what you want, what else we want to say about that. Well, here's here's pictures of uh, most of the core contributors. I, my picture's not up yeah. there, but that's okay. I don't really care. Um, and we don't have Fred up there, which is a shame. Um, he's a great contributor as well. I have to... Yeah. Whoops on the pictures, um, but these are the, all the the core contributors who who day in day out are doing stuff on Defect Dojo. Um, we're a super active project, like we said, we've done Google Summer of Code multiple times. We're OWASP flagship. Uh, the the commit rates are pretty insane. Um, this is for what I a, a month um, in this screenshot and. The other thing is the growth. Like I remember when Greg and I were like, "Hey, we got to a hundred stars. <laughs> we have one point eight k stars now. It's nuts. Almost a thousand forks." Um, and we this is over the the last month we did one hundred and nineteen pull requests. So this is a crazy active project with loads and loads of contributors and lots of small contributors, which is fantastic. We love people fixing little silly UI wrinkles, typos, whatever, like parsers, the whole nine has is, is really been fantastic. So how can you help? Start with, you know, fixing a parser issue, like Matt was saying, something small for sure. Uh, we welcome those sorts of things. Uh, documentation, who doesn't need help with documentation? <laughs> <laughs> so we try as best we can. Or even it could just be, you know, getting giving us a sanitized version of a of an output of a of a tool because you know obviously we don't have every tool in the world, um, so that would be great. Join the Slack channel. We've got a really active uh, Slack channel, um, or donate. <laughs> yeah, we we don't mind donations, and those those <laughs> scanner outputs are really fantastic because we end up yeah. wiring those into our unit test as well. So they really help keep the the project going and the quality up. And Again, here are some of our, you know, there's just, there's almost too many to even point out, but there they are on the page. So you can read them, but yeah, we've had lots of great contributions. Um, Obviously core contributors have done a lot, but I mean, it's been our community that's really improved this project. Absolutely. It it would be not half of what it is without the community contributions we have. Oh, and then we we run a full-time demo. You can log in as an admin to Defect Dojo at demo.defectdojo.org with these credentials. It's also up on the readme and GitHub and log in and play around. Um, every every day it gets fully refreshed. So like, uh, you know, don't expect your stuff to be there uh, today that you put in yesterday. And um, I'm surprisingly giving someone a... Uh, giving someone an admin login to Defect Dojo to any Tom, Dick, and Harry that wants to come in and, and log in, and it stayed up. So if nothing else, I think we figured out it's pretty resilient. I remember logging in one day, and there was 27K findings added by I don't know who, um, and it just it just rolled right along. Well, we've, we've reached the end of our exciting Dojo story. And Jim-